It's Wednesday once again, time for some Bible study. We're glad that you can be with us. This is Pastor James Gouts from Evangel Assembly of God and Anchor Church in Fort Lauderdale, 1045 Northwest 1st Avenue. Well, last week we were talking about uh, helping churches to get back on track after the pandemic, get people back in church and how the churches should be involved in helping one another. You, If you were with us, you remember that we had a video from my son Jim uh, and his wife Melissa in the South Texas District of the Assemblies of God, who are home missionaries involved in helping churches that are hurting and churches that have needs. Uh, it's a healthy church ministry, helping what we're talking about, churches to get back on track uh, all the time, not just whenever there's a pandemic. And, uh, you know, help them in spiritual matters, physical matters, technical matters, as the Lord leads. Very important ministry. But uh, he was emphasizing, uh, among other things, and we, and we took some time to emphasize how that we as individuals need to be involved in ministering and not just depending on church leadership. That's very important. But individuals now have access to, you know, personal contact, telephone, emails, uh, text messages, uh, social media, all kinds of ways to reach people and uh, to edify people, to bring the word of God to people, and we need to be doing that. So uh, in, in the Bible study, we, we talked about that, and we talked about some of the people uh, that are not some of the best known people in the Bible, but some of the people that the Apostle Paul uh, used and knew and was encouraging in the ministry, just to put a personal touch on things. And then Sunday, we were uh, in the book of Revelation, preaching about the coming of the Lord. We've been preaching quite a bit about the coming of the Lord and what God has planned in the future. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. We were, uh, we were talking about those things. And we'll still be preaching about that uh, next week, the Lord willing. But at the beginning of the book of Revelation, there is a uh, section that starts out uh, letters to the seven churches of Asia as John is on the island of Patmos and exiled there for uh, being a Christian and uh, he writes to these churches beginning in uh, Revelation uh, chapter 2 and we mentioned one, only one of the churches on Sunday the church at Philadelphia and I thought since we're talking about taking care of church problems, problems and ministering to churches with needs and troubles, that we would talk about these churches a little bit, and maybe we might not get it all done, but we'll just we'll just take this as it comes and we'll see what happens. Uh, and we're not going to. This is not going to be a complete study about the seven churches of Asia. There's a lot to say here, and uh, of course, I think in the uh, New Testament and the King James, especially whenever they talk about Asia, we we, we need to realize they're talking about Asia Minor which would be the area of present-day uh, Turkey. This is uh, uh, looked at different ways by different Bible scholars. Some people say this is just what it is, a message to these seven churches. Some people say it's a message to the church all throughout the, the years, like church ages, and the church will go through these different uh, phases. But I, 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 it doesn't matter how you look at it. These, and I'm sure these, these are actual churches that got these letters, so they do mean that. But, but what I'm looking for is something in here that can help us to be a church, uh, a, a, the body of Christ, the people of God, that uh, put the Lord uh, as he's supposed to be first in our ministry and let him use us in the ministry. Now, the first church that received a, a letter... And these are messages from Jesus, you know, as, as he stood before the Lord. He was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Maybe we ought to look at that first in chapter 1, verse 10. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard a great voice saying, I am Alpha and Omega. This is Jesus speaking, the first and the last. What thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. And he names these uh, seven churches, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Theatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And he says in chapter 1 still, verse 17, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, 
and I have the keys of hell and death. Write the things which you have seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars are the angels, are the, the leaders, uh, we think, the, 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 the leadership, not angels as a, as, a, as a sense of angels that we normally think of. The leaders of the seven churches and the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. Uh, now, the whole book of Revelation are to these seven churches, but of course it's to all of the church. But each one has a preface here, and that's what this is all about. A specific message just for them. Here's, that's a good point. God has a general message for everybody. God has a general message for the church. God has a general message for the people of God. But God has a specific message for individual churches or for you or for individuals or for particular ministries. And so we have to look at it on all different levels. So to the church of Ephesus, let's see what we can uh, take out of this for our edification at this particular time. He said to Ephesus in chapter 2, These things says the one that holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven lampstands, that's in the midst of the churches, I know your works, I know your labors, and I know your patience. And uh, you, uh, you don't put up with the ones that are, that are working evil, and you check out people who say they are apostles or ministers or workers for the Lord, and find out that they're not, that they're just liars and they misrepresent the word of God. So they're doing a good job. You gotta you got you gotta listen, and you gotta decide if people are preaching you the truth. And the way you know if they're preaching you the truth or not is you go by the scripture, you go by the word of God. He says you have borne or put up with, uh, for my name's sake, uh, burdens and labors and difficulties. You've you've got you've had patience, you've labored, you haven't fainted. Nevertheless, See, God wants to deal with everything. He'll, he'll give you credit for what, what credit is due, but he wants you to know. I have somewhat against you because you've left your first love. Hmm, that's an interesting thing. They get scored on a lot. Uh, and the point basically was that no matter what they were doing, they weren't quite doing like they were. No matter how they felt, they didn't quite have the strength and the zeal and the uh, dedication and allegiance that they had. And he says, remember what has happened and repent. And go back and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand out of the place. He says, he, and, and here's what he's going to say over and over and over. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. <clears throat> to him that overcomes will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Now that uh, is, of course, a picture reference back to the way it was in the Garden of Eden, uh, the, the paradise of God. And you could you could have the tree of life there and, and live forever. But you remember how that worked. I'll go back into the first few chapters of Genesis and read that <clears throat> if you don't remember exactly what happened. But he said that what happens is if we successfully finish our course, if we keep the faith and we do what God wants us to do, we will come to a place where we will be overcomers. And then we will, of course, be part of life, and we will live forever in what God has prepared for us. Now, <clears throat> several things that I that I think you already can understand, but let me just emphasize it. God says, I know what you're doing. I know your works. Now, here he's talking about things that they're doing right, but he also knows everything. There's no secrets from God. I, I, I think you know that, and I hope you know that. And uh, you start uh, realizing that and living that way in your life is going to be better. You're going to have more success. You're going to have more profit. And you're going you're gonna to have more happiness and joy and peace and deliverance. God says, I know what's going on. I know. When you work for me, I know that. When you have patience in my work, <clears throat> I know that. When you follow the right people and listen to the right teaching and have the right leadership and check things out, and try the spirits to see if they be of God. He said, I know that. And if you if you put up with things and you suffer for my sake, he said, I know that. If you have patience, I know it. If you haven't given up, if you haven't fallen by the wayside, <clears throat> I know that. And God's saying, uh, but stay with it. Don't diminish. Don't fall back. He said, I, you, you've left your first love. 
it's not it's not just a matter of uh, disobedience or something like that although that some of that could be part of this but it's just not what it used to be maybe you get tired of serving god maybe you get weary of doing what god wants you to do and it's easy to see how that can happen because there's so much that's required of us and there's so much to do and and the, the task is very very difficult but as we work for the lord we have to constantly be aware of the need and we don't ever want to rest on what we've done and act like, well, I'm finished. I've done my part, my part and, and, and what I'm supposed to do, and it's all over. No, we don't ever feel that way. Sometimes we can't always do things the way we did physically or mentally or spiritually because of certain conditions in our life. But it, it's the very best that we can do with God's help. And remember, God doesn't judge like a man. He doesn't see things the way men see sees things, and he doesn't count and, and in God, eight, nine is not necessarily larger than seven, things like that. You know what I'm talking about? God has a whole different standard. So we're not trying to be in competition. We're not even trying to outdo ourselves. We're not even trying to compare our ministry with our own ministry, and especially not our ministry with somebody else's. We, we are standing before the Lord. He's the one that knows. He's the one that makes the decision. He's the one that makes the judgment. He's the one that makes the call, and we want to please him. And he says, if you're listening to me, he said, realize this is a message of what the Spirit is saying to the churches. See, this is a message uh, from God himself through the Holy Spirit to the churches. And remember, uh, Jesus has given us the Holy Spirit to enable us to be able to carry on our ministry and to do the things that he wants us to do. He said back to his apostles that he was praying for them and he had prayed the Father before he went to the crucifixion in the upper room, he said, I pray the Father that he would send you. But so many times last year, and we've emphasized this, I pray the Father that he would send you another helper, even the Spirit of truth. And when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will lead you and guide you into all truth. So let's, let's, let's do uh, at least one more church before we wrap this up tonight. The church to Smyrna. And it's still in chapter 2, uh, verse 8. He said, Write to the church in Smyrna and say, These things saith the first and the last, the one who was dead and is now alive. Now, when he wrote to the church at Ephesus, he said, This is from the one that holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks in the midst of the gold, seven golden lampstands. Now, he's adding to that. We could, we could come up with a, quite a description of Jesus if we take what he says to each one of these churches. But in the second one, he says, I'm the first and the last. That reminds us of what he said to John back in the very beginning. He said, I'm Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. See, And then he said, I am the one who was dead and is alive. Remember what he said back in chapter 1, verse 18 to John? I am he that lives and was dead, and I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of hell and death. So, Jesus keeps emphasizing over and over and over. If he says something one time, it's important. If he says it two times, it's more important. But the more times that Jesus says the same thing, Jesus is not just being repetitive or redundant, the more important it is. So here he is emphasizing again, and you're going to see this more and more as we go on here. You're going to, you're going to understand this more and more, that it's... Uh, the Lord saying, this is who Jesus is. Now, he said to the church at Smyrna, I know your works. Uh, that's exactly what he said to uh, Ephesus. I know your works. Tribulation, poverty, I know that you've been through that. I know there are some phony people. There are some false prophets, some uh, people who are already working for the enemy that are in your midst, but I know who they are. He said, don't be afraid of these things which you're going to have to go through. He said, you're going to have to go through some troubles. Prison, trials, tribulation. But he says, if you'll be faithful unto death, I will give you a crown of life. Um, we don't know what we're going to have. We don't know what we're going to go through. But the Lord does. He knows what we're experiencing. And he says, that if we, be, if we would be faithful to the very end, right on to the very end, if we would be faithful, he would give us a crown of life. Doesn't that sound a little bit familiar to what he said before? 
He said, if you overcome to the church at Ephesus, I will give you to eat of the tree of life. See, that's, that's overcoming and everlasting life. Here it's being faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. With the Lord, it's all about life. I have come that you might have life, and that you might have it more abundantly. This is John, writing Revelation, who also wrote John's Gospel and the three letters of John. And the Gospel of John the theme is about life in the Son, S-O-N, life in Jesus. It's all about life. That's what Jesus is all about. He wants everybody to have life. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to a place of repentance and have life everlasting. He said, if you overcome, you will not be hurt in the second death. Whenever we come to the real end, we're going to be safe. We're going to be safe and sound. We're going to be provided for. See, he said, you, you tell the, the people in charge at Ephesus that I'm in charge. You tell them I know what they're doing, and I'm going to reward them, and I'm going to protect them, and I don't want them to get weak and, and lose their first love. I want them to go back. He said to the leadership at the church at Smyrna, he said, I want you to know that I am the one who lives forever. I have everlasting life. I have all power in heaven and earth, and I know what you're doing, but I also know you're going through troubles. He starts here. Other churches have had this experience, but he says, I know you're going through tribulation and you're going through a loss. You're going through poverty. But he said, really, and this is something we didn't read. In fact, let's, 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 let's get to our stopping place by emphasizing this. If you go uh, back with me to verse 9, he says, I, I know your tribulation and your poverty, but it says then, but thou art rich. See, in the Lord, no matter what your circumstances are, in the Lord, no matter what your physical condition is, no matter what you have or what you don't have, you are rich in the Lord. He has given us his riches. We could run references all over the Bible on these phrases and these words and what God says over and over and over. Come to me. I offer you life. I offer you a way out. No matter what you go through, I am with you and I will bring you out. I offer you riches. I offer you gold tried in the fire. The kind of gold that's going to last forever. Gold has to be purified. And the, the more pure it is, the more valuable it is. And God tries us in the fire so that we can be like pure gold. But it's his pure gold. He said, listen, listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. When we go over these things, when we share these things, when we talk about these things, it's not just our words as we read the scriptures here and teach the scriptures. It's the word of God. The Holy Spirit is backing these things up. So uh, we, we've done two, and, you know, maybe the Lord leading will keep on, and we'll look at how we have problems in the churches, and we're still following this uh, same thing that we were talking about last week, and we're all in the ministry, no matter whether we're pastors or evangelists or missionaries, home missionaries, foreign missionaries. We're in the same ministry my son's in of helping churches, ministering to churches. We're so thankful that we have the means to come to you live in our services on Sunday at Evangel uh, at 11 o'clock, that we can come on, on Facebook, we can come on uh, YouTube and, and uh, uh, some of these other things uh, that, are, that are beginning to come on. We're going to try to take advantage of all social media as it's made available to us as long as we possibly can. It's a good thing. But we want people to tell people, you, you have a ear? Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Not what I'm saying. Not just what a particular church is saying, but what the Spirit is saying to the churches. So we'll continue on this, but let's have a word of prayer. God, help you uh, tonight to take this word to heart and to meet the needs that you represent and that you know about. So many needs, so many problems, but uh, we, we, we have the ones that our church knows about, that I know about, and you have the ones that you know about. Let's commit these things to the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight that we can come together around the Word of God. We thank you for this, uh, these messages to the churches of Asia Minor that were given to John the Apostle on the island of Patmos. And we thank you for this great revelation. So many people are a little bit afraid to read it, but th these are the good things to read for the last days, Lord, in the times that we live in. This is a great message for not only the seven churches, but all the churches, not only for uh, Smyrna and Ephesus and Pergamos and Philadelphia and these other churches, but good for us wherever we might be. And whatever we call the church, whether it's a few people or a 
hundred people or a thousand people that come together. It doesn't make any difference, Lord. We're all in the body of Christ. And we need to be ready uh, for the marriage supper of the Lamb to be called at the great wedding feast. We want that fine white linen of, 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 of your righteousness to be upon us. We want to listen. We want to obey. We want to continue on with our dedication and our uh, attitudes and, and our desires to be as strong as they've ever been and even stronger in these last days. Help us to come back to the place where we should be, Lord, and strengthen ourselves in the power that you've given us. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your spirit you have said to us. May we reach out and become victorious through the power of the Holy Spirit in these times in which we live. Many people have needs and problems and difficulties, Lord, but you know about them. And we bring them into your presence and we commit them into your keeping and ask for your healing and restoration, uh, Lord, as you reach out to the people with troubles today, Lord. Lift us up, set us in a strong place. We are glad that we uh, will not be moved. Uh, we'll, like the song says, we'll be like a tree planted by the waters, as David said in the Psalms, where that song comes from, that we'll be strong and uh, the storms won't move us and the, uh, the problems of life will not move us and the strong winds will not move us, but we will be stand. We'll be like the wise man who built his house upon a rock. Thank you for that and bless all of your people and anoint your people, we ask uh, at this time in the name of Jesus. And everybody join me in saying a great amen. God bless you.